All right, so here is our first example. We've got an angle in standard position with a terminal arm in quadrant four and cos theta is two fifths. Determine the exact value. So what kind of question is this? Is this a proof? No. Does it seem like a triangle question? Yes. So we sort of, we've used this strategy a lot that if we can draw, if we're given enough information to draw the angle in standard position, we can make a triangle. And so we start to see this pattern coming up. They tell us an angle's in standard position. That's already should get us thinking of a triangle question. Is there enough information here to tell which quadrant it's in? Well, this is the most basic one where they tell you the quadrant directly. We know that it's in quadrant four, so we can make a triangle with a reference angle right there. Then they give us that cos is two-fifths. And so that means the adjacent side is two, the hypotenuse is five, and you can do a squared plus b squared equals c squared and calculate the other side. Once you have your triangle, you can calculate each of these things. Now, sine two theta. We don't know what theta is. We know it's in quadrant four. We don't know the reference angle. This question says determine the exact value, which means it's going to be a non-calculator question. We could figure out what the angle theta is if we had our calculator, because you could do cos inverse of two-fifths to find your reference angle and then figure out what that angle is in quadrant four. But this question is a non-calculator question, so how do we go about this? We just learned the formula for sine two theta is two sine theta cos theta. From our triangle, we already knew that cos of theta was two over five. Now that we've made our triangle, we know that sine of theta opposite over hypotenuse is going to be root 21 over 5 and it's going to be negative because sine is negative in quadrant 4. So to find the exact value of sine 2 theta, we can substitute values in for sine theta and cos theta. Again, just like that thing we did the other day, we don't know what theta is. So we're not going to write sine of negative root 21 over 5. We know that sine of theta is this, so we can replace all of that with negative root 21 over 5. We know that cos of theta is 2 fifths, so we can replace all of that with 2 fifths. And now it's just a matter of multiplying fractions. Be careful with that 2 out in front, that's really a 2 over 1. Multiplying fractions, you multiply across the top, multiply the bottoms, and so we get sine of 2 theta is exactly negative 4 root 21 over 25. Now in part B it says find the value of cos of 2 theta. And we have three formulas for cos of 2 theta. All three will get you the right answer. So one thing you could decide to do is just choose one at random and go with that. And that will work. In this question, if I was picking one as which one would be the best, I would choose that one to be the best. Anyone have any idea why I would decide that that one's better than the cos squared minus sine squared or better than the one minus two sine squared one? Because it, it, only, it only involves cos. And what's important about cos in this question is we were given that in the question, right? Unless you're a person that's never made a mental math error, I don't know if those exist, right? There's a possibility I could have made a mistake when I calculated root 21, right? I mean, I figured that out. I did a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I could have made a mistake. If I made a mistake with that, 
then if I use the co squared minus sine squared formula, then I would use that mistake in my next calculations. But the two fifths was given to us, so we know that that's not a mistake. So now when calculating this, it's going to equal two. Cos of theta is two fifths. What am I going to do with that squared? Well, squared just means multiplied by itself, so I could write two fifths times two fifths, or I could write two fifths squared minus one. For our final ex answer, okay, again, this is two over one. Do your order of operations. You're going to square first, so this is going to be four over 25 times two, eight over 25. If we write our final answer as 8 over 25 minus 1, they'll deduct you on the final exam because they want the final exam, all answers written as a single fraction. So in order to put the 8 over 25 and the minus 1 together, we're going to need a common denominator. And we get cos of 2 theta is negative 17 over 25. From the practice questions at the end, question number nine you can do for practice. 